Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Revit video. In this video, we're going to look at taking these conceptual squares that have wonderful parameter data and transferring those into a schedule so we can see kind of the holistic view of all of them as we plan through a master plan or space plan, whatever it might be. But I'd highly encourage you to look at part one of this video because that was us creating this family that involves a label and this filled region that is carrying this data over into our project. So before we get into it, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, which I hope you do, like, please, why, why, why are you here? I hope that's why you're here. Demolish that like button. Tells me that you might have learned something, and I appreciate it a lot. It helps me out. So, okay, getting into it now. We are going to now take this data essentially it is a, it is data but it's in this form of a square and we can take this data and schedule it and we want to see it in a schedule see it working because not only do i want to see it working in plan but i want to see all of it come together in a lovely schedule and it might be a schedule that we ultimately uh, export or at least take the data from and use in a presentation or just have to refer to constantly. That's the point of this. This is all real time. So let's go ahead and make this, you know, maybe this one will be a bathroom. Seems to make sense. And it's going to be a bit smaller than the rest. So that works just fine. And again, this is all kind of up to you where you put them, what you name them, all the, those types of things. But what I want to do now is come up to view. And we, because we want to schedule it, obviously, uh, we want to make a schedule. So obviously schedule here, but then this is really kind of what matters. So is it a multi-category schedule? Yes and no. Is it a, a detail category schedule? Uh, schedule? Yeah, I would say that. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. So I don't want to call it whatever that is, a detail item schedule. I'm going to call this a concept schedule, whatever you might want to call it. And it could really be anything, of course, area schedule, whatever, doesn't matter. So we have all of this. Now here is the, the kind of the big part here that we need to take into account. Well, we have all of these and these are all detail items. Now, if I pull in from the previous video, we made two parameters, one called name and one called area. If I come over here and pull over name and then pull over area and press OK, we make our schedule. And look at that. It, it is that simple. And why is it that simple? Well, it is that simple because I used shared parameters and those shared parameters are found, of course, within our project parameters as well. So manage and then share parameters. And we can see, look, these parameters are within this group called concept. And then I have all of these here. And so let's inspect this name and I can look at my properties and it is what it is. It's text. It's exactly what I need it to be. And why did this work so well, so easily, whatever? And that's, it's just because what this family is in this family, if we go into it, it is a detail item. And that's really important. I chose to make that schedule a detail schedule for that reason. And look at that. We have them there. It's that simple. You know, if we look at the fields again, you'll notice like, wait, I mean, they, they just happen to be here. And how do they happen to be here? Because, and I'm going to show you why I asked that question, because if I come to manage and project parameters, there's nothing here except one random thing that I can delete. I don't need that at all. So I have no project parameters and nothing is driving the fact that they are, they exist there. And so why is that? Normally what you'd have to do is create a project parameter called name. That's text. That's all that stuff. Uh, referring back to the name that we have in those families. And that is because they are shared parameters. That is the power of shared parameters. And the fact that they're detail items or that they're coming from a detail item family tells me that they need to show up here. It tells Revit. So then I can access them. It's really simple. So I can do something as simple as going to then length and width. I want to see the length and the width. And we can have this scheduled however we want. So when I look at this, I can see all the data that I really want to see. And that's really cool. So at this point, yeah, there's a lot more that we could do at this point. Um, but really, we're kind of done. Now, the last thing I probably would do is do some sorting, simple sorting, maybe by name and then by area. And, you know, I probably want to calculate these totals and I can come over to formatting area. And then where you see no calculation, we want to just calculate our totals like that obviously makes sense. And it might be that we want to achieve and see the total length and the total width 
you know, you can do that type of thing. And we can press OK. Well, we're not done yet because we just need to go to sorting and then grand totals. And what do I want to see here? Well, you know, I don't need to see how many rooms I have. Maybe you want to do, do that. You can do count in totals. We can see we have three rooms or three areas or three of these boxes. And then here are total square feet, total length, total width. Like this is really great. And now here's, you know, a, an interesting thing that we can do. Now, let's say you put in like the cost per square foot or something into that particular family into one of these family you could you could do that put the cost per square foot you have a parameter that's based on that all you need to do at that point if you wanted to see like the cost per square foot based on the area of course is do a calculated total and let's go ahead and do that actually because it's very simple so i can come on here family and parameter and i'm just going to make a brand new parameter just just to keep things all the same, I'm going to make it a shared parameter. So let's make a new one and just maybe cost. That's a great way to put it. So cost per area. Look at that. That's exactly what we want. It's going to be like a, a, a dollar value. Okay. Boom. That's done. That's easy. And with that, we simply load that in and we're good to go. And I mean, if I click on this, we see, well, there's no cost here. If we look, there's no I mean, there's the cost there it's a type and that's fine. We can go ahead and set it to a certain value. And maybe this is, you know, Oh, I don't know. A hundred bucks a square foot. That that's seems simple enough. Right? So that's just going to exist there. And, it, and because it's a type, it's going to fall within all of these cool, easy. Um, all right. So going back to my schedule, because it's a shared parameter again, I can simply come in here and see, Ooh, look cost. That's fantastic. And so, Great. I can look at that and say, well, you know, it's a hundred bucks. I mean, pfft, what is this doing? This is, well, it's telling me this is a hundred bucks per square foot, but it's not really even displaying that that well. So how would we fix that? Well, again, this is going to be similar to the units. So we can come back into our family, go to manage and then project units. And we can see currency is, it's kind of dumb right now. Like why, you know, I want a dollar sign, that type of thing. You know, it's up to you, obviously. <laughs> um, we can have decimal place. We cannot. I'll keep them for now because it seems to make the most sense. Save it, load it in, things like that. And then going back into my schedule, overwrite it, of course, into the schedule, we can see that doesn't seem to work. And that's because the project units are not set up for that either. So simply putting our symbol as a dollar sign would be simple enough. So cool. There we go. Dollar sign. With that done, now, like I said before, this is not the data we want, the cost per square foot is a hundred bucks. Now what's the actual cost? This is not the actual cost. It's not a hundred bucks. This is where we can introduce one more parameter. And this is not going to be a shared parameter or anything like that. It's going to be down here. And here's an, a calculated parameter. This may be new to you, but it's, it's really cool and really easy. So we're going to call this cost per square foot, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, but what do we want this to be? We want this to be actually a cost, basically a cost. Again, it's going to be a probably more like a currency, basically a dollar value. So what are we going to do? What is this formula? Well, there's two ways. We can just simply type it in like we've typed in other formulas, or we can actually press this button and it will pull up all of the parameters that we can use. And so what, what do we want to do? Well, um, we basically need our cost per square foot, our area. So cost, here we go. And then we'll add multiply times area. And you could type in area, whatever if you want. And we get inconsistent units. So what's the way around this? Well, the way around this is, in fact, dividing this by one. And I don't ask me why that works. Uh, it's just getting the units working. <laughs> and so with that, we press OK. And look at this. This is kind of exactly what I want now. I'm still seeing some issues because I want to see um, some nice commas. And I can do that through, again, currency and then just use digit grouping. I know it's not quite obvious that that's what that means, but digit grouping is going to uh, add those commas. And look at this. This is, of course, what I want. And then now what really matters is we come to cost. I want to hide that. Don't want to see that. But then I go to cost per square foot. I name that I might want to rename this, you know, total cost because this is the total cost of each room. And then finally the actual total cost. But then I want to calculate this and we want to see the totals. Look at that. Now that is a schedule. That is exactly what I want. And so now here's the real power of having this as a schedule. I can make this here. And of course we can make as many of these boxes as I want, but moving it around doesn't matter. But look at this. As soon as I update this, 
every single value associated to living is updated. The dollar value, the everything. And you really get an idea of how impactful this is. Now, as an architect, I'm not going to go and put in a cost necessarily. If I do, it's going to be like very, very rounded, very, very <laughs> ambiguous number just for like a giant ballpark idea. But other than that, this is really it. You know, you could you can really see how useful this is. And so I'm going to go ahead and copy this and maybe we call this, I don't know, let's call this the dining room. Great. So the dining room there, it's look, immediately we get a fourth line item here with a different room and we can change the size and you can see it has total effect on everything like this. This is cool. It's easy. And I like this. I like doing this and using this because I can see it update in real time. And it's just so easy to move these boxes around. It's so simple. And they'll, of course, align and whatnot to each other because of how the, all the reference planes are set up with the different families. So that will do for this video. I hope you ended up learning something. If you did, please, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Also tells me that you might have learned something or even just liked the video. So this is part two of concepts and you know making this nice little box that is going to report data and then specifically make this schedule and see all of it update in real time. It's really cool. If you haven't watched, if you've gotten this far and you haven't watched part one, please do that because that sets up everything to do with these basic boxes that work with the name and the area parameters and how we made them shared and, you know, pass them through nested families and got them to this point. So check that out for yourself. Again, that will do it for this video. I hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. And thank you very much for watching.